The topics covered in this video will be the award of a penalty stroke, obstruction and legitimate tackling. There are three reasons given for the award of a penalty stroke in the rule, set out in two clauses. First, for an offence by a defender in the circle which prevents the probable scoring of a goal. Secondly, for an intentional offence in the circle by a defender against an opponent who has possession of the ball or an opportunity to play the ball. Or an opportunity to play the ball is a simple statement but it is not a clear one. I think this third reason should be set out in a separate clause. Okay. For an intentional offence in the circle by a defender against an opponent which denies that opponent opportunity to play at the ball when that opponent would otherwise have been able to do so. This suggested wording is pretty close to the way the obstruction rule could be written. The following match clips are taken from matches played in the weekend in the 11th of November 2018. To start with a penalty stroke I think should not have been awarded. Tackler comes in and makes a sweep edge tackle. The ball pops up between the sticks, play continues, but the umpire has already signalled for a penalty stroke at the time the tackle was made. We take a look at what is written in the UBM about tackles. Watch tackles carefully, only penalise if you are sure there has been an, off an offence. And then this piece of nonsense. Do not penalise just because there is a noise or it looks bad. It's reasonable not to penalise just because there is a noise, but the umpire must penalise if it looks bad. How else is it to be judged? But looking at a still at the moment the tackle was made, it is apparent that the umpire did react to noise and not to what he could see because he could not see the ball it was blocked from his view by the body of the tackler this umpire could not have been sure there was an offence and in my opinion there wasn't an offence I think the following penalty corner was awarded not for the tackle attempt there but for obstruction by the second defender who imposes herself between the attacker and the ball and prevents her from playing it. That decision looks correct to me. I don't think the clause in the obstruction rule about imposing the body is clear or simple. A player with the ball is permitted to move off with it in any direction except bodily into an opponent or into a position between the ball and the opponent who is within playing distance of the ball and attempting to play it. This explanation of application of Rule 912 is set out as an exception to the statement that a player with the ball is permitted to move off with it in any direction. It is not necessary or useful to make that statement. It is much easier to say that a player with the ball is not permitted to move bodily into an opponent or into a position between the ball and an opponent who is within playing distance of the ball and attempting to play it. An umpire only needs to intervene when a prohibited action takes place, so let's have prohibited actions explained. The umpire manager's briefing gives additional wording to include movement to prevent a tackle attempt. We could therefore improve this wording further. A player with the ball is not permitted to move bodily into an opponent or into a position between the ball and the opponent to impede that opponent or prevent an opponent playing directly at the ball when that opponent would otherwise be able to do so. I'm suggesting that that paragraph replace the rather simplistic or the possibility to play the ball. But the following incident shows that the explanation of application of the obstruction rule is still woefully short of information. Here an umpire appears to award a penalty corner for obstruction in circumstances when an obstruction by the body of the defender was impossible. The attacker from the defender's goal side of the defender plays the ball back towards the top of the circle and then drifts along the baseline without further trying to play at the ball. It has to be understood that in the position shown in the picture the defender is goal side of the ball and the attacker is not his own goal side of the ball. Therefore the attacker cannot be obstructed by this defender. He is in fact in much the same sort of position as a back tackler would be 
who had been gone past by a forward and is chasing back to try to get goal side of the ball again. All that happened was that the attacker played the ball where the defender could run after it and the defender did so. It is generally true to say that a back tackling player cannot be obstructed by an opponent who keeps the ball in front of his feet. A player in possession of the ball who is his own goal side of the ball cannot obstruct with his body an opponent who is not his own, the opponent's goal side of the ball. A player who is the opponent's goal side of opponents cannot obstruct those opponents or be bodily obstructed by them. Physical contact offences and obstruction by, obstruction by fending off a tackle with stick, hand, arm or leg movement are still a possibility however. I'm on more familiar ground with the following incident. Here we have a clear obstruction by the defender which the umpire does not penalise. There are in fact a series of obstructions by the, the defender starting well inside the circle and a penalty stroke ought to have been awarded.